This is integration by parts. I've borrowed this integration by parts from Wiley Plus, which is actually a really old idea. So didn't, I only got this one from Wiley Plus. We want to think about integration by parts as the anti-product rule. So today we're gonna to check it out, all of its quirks and features and take it for a test drive. So integration by parts is the anti-product rule. I'm gonna skip all the development because it doesn't really illuminate anything at the beginning. It's a useful thing to go back and look to see where the integration by parts came from, but um, it's more important, I think, to just get started doing the things. So let me bring up my integration by parts. Oh no, I didn't have the right thing queued up. So integration by parts. The good thing about integration by parts is that there is just a formula to remember. The integral of u dv is uv minus the integral of v du. This is the integration by parts formula. So there's the good thing. We have a formula for integration by parts. There's the bad thing. There's a formula for integration by parts. So let's talk about how integration by parts is going to work. Over here on the left is the integral that you've been given. And then over here on the right is how you can integrate the given integral. Now you may notice one of the features is that there's another integral over here on the right. The idea is that we take an integral that we don't know how to do. We break off this first piece, the UV, and then we have a secondary integral and, we just, and that's supposedly going to be an easier one to integrate. So these two parts are the given parts. And then there's other parts that you have to go and find. Then you put them together in the formula and do your secondary integral. So the way it works is that you are, these are your given parts. You're going to decide one of the factors is u and the other factor is dv. And then that leaves you parts that you have to find. So given the parts u and dv, you have to find the other two parts. So the other parts, there's a u, there's a u, there's a dv, and there's also a v, so we'll need a part called v that comes from the dv, and then there's a part over here called du. So you, you decide on your given parts, u and dv, then you find the other two parts, du and v. The way this works is that you differentiate u to find du, you integrate dv to find v. So you differentiate one part and integrate the other part. So differentiate u. to find du and integrate dv to find v. Then you put things together into the formula, then you evaluate the secondary integral. So let's look at an example. This is techniques of integration, so it's going to be death by examples. So for example, let's suppose that we want to, to integrate, I'm going to do the classic one, x times cosine of x dx. Classic integration by parts. One of the reasons that we're going to try parts on this problem is that we notice that it's not a substitution problem. I don't see something to be the inside. All that's plugged into the cosine is the x. If I had an x squared in here, then, and I had an x out here, that would say, do a substitution problem. Uh, do this uh, integration by substitution, but I don't have a squared in the cosine. 
So this we're going to try integration by parts. What we do for integration by parts is we pick one factor to be u. I'm going to say u is x. That's not good grammar. u are x. And I say dv is the rest of it, cosine of x dx. That's how I'm going to split the parts as factors. Then I need to find the other two parts. I've got, I've decided on u and dv. I need a v and du, those are my other two parts. We differentiate to find du. So if u is x, then du is x dx. Sorry, one dx. If we integrate cosine x, remember we're going integration direction. So the integral of cosine is just sine. So v is sine x. So we decided on our given parts. We found the other two parts. Now we just need to put them together into the formula. The formula says uv. So the formula says to do u times v. So that's going to be x times the sine of x minus the integral of v times du sine of x dx. So we've just done one round of parts. But now we're better off because we look at the secondary integral. And the secondary integral just asks us to integrate sine. So now we can do the secondary integral. So now we're going to find the secondary integral. The integral of negative sine x is, uh, sorry, the integral of negative sine x is cosine x. So I still have this x sine x. That's already been integrated. So x times sine x. The integral of negative sine x is cosine x because the derivative of cosine x is negative sine. So those are the steps in integration by parts. You decide on your given parts, you pick a u and a dv, you differentiate to find the du, you integrate to find v. Plug things into the formula and then evaluate the secondary integral. Any questions? All right. So if you're thinking, gosh, this seems super easy. It's like, well, yeah, this is the first example. Don't worry, it gets worse. Oh, wait, that's not how you're supposed to go with that. Well, it's the truth, and we're just going to have to accept it. The, some things to keep in mind. We're trying to get to this secondary integral. The secondary integral should be whatever this means. The secondary integral should be easier than what you started with. And it's one of the things that we have to learn when we're learning integration by parts is that we don't want to make things worse. And worse is in quotes because uh, as when, you, when we're new, as, as newbies to this integration by parts business, everything looks bad. So we're gonna have to develop a sense of what's worse. Let's do another basic example. Let's see, let's, what's the other classic example of integration by parts? So let's integrate um, x times e to the 2x 
the x. So once again, we start off by picking our givens. Something has to be u and something has to be dv. I'm gonna pick once again the u to be x and then the dv And then dv is e to the 2x dx. So notice I'm not grabbing the inside of something. I'm just grabbing a whole factor. u and dv both have to be factors, not like inside functions. We're not breaking this apart like a composition like we did with the substitution. We're breaking it apart like a product. We're looking, breaking it apart into factors because parts is the anti-product rule. So we break it apart in factors. Substitution is the anti-chain rule. So we break it apart in comp as a composition. So we differentiate to find the du. The derivative of x is one times dx. And we integrate to find v, v, the integral of e to the 2x is e to the 2x. And then we need a 1 half because we're going in the integration direction. The derivative of a half e to the 2x is a half e to the 2x times the derivative of the inside, which is a 2. And so I need that 1 half to cancel out the derivative of the inside. Now I'm ready to write down my uh, plug things into the parts formula. Question? Yeah, sorry, I didn't understand the half. Uh, why we had that half there. We're integrating uh, e to the 2x. So the integral of e to the kx dx is 1 over k e to the kx plus c, but we don't care about that in the middle. Got it. Okay. And this comes from the fact that the derivative of e to the kx is k e to the kx. So when we're integrating going this direction, we're trying to cancel out that k. And so we drop a 1 over k. We could also think of doing a substitution w equals kx. But I didn't want to bring up substitution in the middle of doing a parts problem. We're now ready. Now that we have all four parts, we're ready to use the parts formula. So it's uv. So I have x times v, which is a 1 half e to the 2x, minus the integral of v times du. So 1 half e to the 2x times dx. Now, when we look at our secondary integral, instead of having x e to the 2x, we've just got the e to the 2x. So now we're in the same situation we were here with the sine x. Instead of having x trig function, we just have the trig function. So in that sense, things have got smaller. So now we integrate the secondary integral. We still have a 1 half x e to the 2x. And then we have the have to integrate a one half e to the two x, and that'll give us a one fourth e to the two x. Still minus. And then we have to put a plus c on it. So. One of the things that you might see happen is some algebra. So if you're going to go check your work on Wolfram Alpha or use your TI-89, I don't think anybody has a TI-89 anymore. That's like super late 90s, early 2000s. Because like Wolfram Alpha said, you don't need no TI-89. Uh, one of the things that might happen, notice that there's a common factor of e to the 2x. So a common thing to happen is to factor out this factor. So you don't have to do this for me, but I'm just warning you, if you check your work, there's a common factor of an e to the 2x, and that will leave a 2x minus uh, 1 plus c. 
it might be instead of having a bunch of terms, instead of having a bunch of terms all with an e to the 2x, it's sometimes more useful to have the exponential part multiplied by just one polynomial. So this is a, either one is fine. In fact, it's better if you stop at the first one because then it's very clear how you got there from parts. If you start doing stuff like this and you haven't written this one in the middle, I know that you're just appealing to Wolfram Alpha. I know it seems really slick when you go into Wolfram Alpha and just drop in your answers there, but it's very obvious when you copy and paste your answers from some other source. It's also very obvious when you email each other your answers and you just, and the second person, instead of typing, it just copies and pastes it because it copies and pastes weird in Canvas. So, watch out for those things. Any questions? This is the basic parts maneuver. Let's increase this by one. Let's suppose I wanted to integrate x squared e to the 2x. I'm just taking the previous one and adding one factor of x to it. First of all, notice that we have an x squared and we also have a 2x, but we don't have 2x as a factor to be the dw. 2x is not a factor here. 2x is the exponent with a base of e. So this is not a substitution problem. Early on in Calc 2, this is the, this is the sneaky trap problem. It's like, oh, here's an x squared. Oh, there's a 2x right there. Let's do substitution. But it's totally not a substitution. If w is equal to x squared, then I need 2x dx as a factor and 2x is not a factor here, it's an exponent. So it's really important to note this is not substitution. Not substitution. Two x is an exponent and not a factor. Two x is an exponent, not a factor. To make an integration by substitution go, you need the derivative of the inside as a factor. And we don't have that. Also, the x squared is not inside anything. So if it's not substitution, at this point in your calculus career, if it's not substitution, it's parts. So let's say that u is x squared and dv is e to the 2x to x. Just going to go with my standard deployment. U is the polynomial. And dv is the exponential in this case. Once we assign our parts u and dv, then du is 2x to x. And v, just like before, is a 1 half e to the 2x. Now that we've, found, we've assigned our two given parts, we've decided on our two given parts, we have found our, the two parts that we have to find, we're ready to plug things into the parts formula. I have to angle it down a little bit. It's gonna be uv, so I'm gonna have a 1 half x squared e to the 2x, 1 half x squared e to the 2x, minus the integral, of v times du. So the one half, oh, I'm just gonna write it out, 2x times one half e to the 2x to x. In this case, the two and the one half will cancel out and we get our secondary integral. 
So I still have the one half x squared e to the two x minus the integral of x e to the two x to x. We can cancel the constants. Now we've got a secondary integral, x e to the two x, and it's another parts problem. It's parts within parts. Parts is a method that's gonna do this to you sometimes. So in this problem, our secondary integral is also a parts integral. But where we started off with x squared times e to the 2x, we now have x e to the 2x. Things have gotten smaller, so that counts as progress. Also, we happen to know that x e to the 2x will be solved by parts in one iteration of parts. So if we refer to the, uh, the previous one, we would do the same thing. U is equal to X, DV is equal to E to the two X. DU is equal to one times DX. And V is another one half E to the two X, just like before. So we can just kind of go up to the previous example and lift our solution and drop it down in for the integral of x e to the 2x. But we have to be careful with some subtractions. So we're going to have a 1 half x squared e to the 2x minus what we had before, 1 half x e to the 2x minus 1 fourth e to the 2x plus c. So notice I have to subtract all the terms from before. If I multiply this out, that's gonna be a minus one half x e to the two x and then a plus, minus and minus makes plus. So I could write this as a one half x squared e to the two x minus a one half x e to the two x plus one fourth e to the two x plus c. As before, we notice that there's a common factor of an e to the two x, and we can also pull the one fourth so that there's only one fraction in our entire expression. So we could write this as a one fourth e to the two x, and what's left over is a two x squared minus a two x plus one plus c. So in this case, we just had to do parts again. Any questions? Um, how, so I understand that we had to do it twice, but why did, I guess, I'm trying to figure out how we kept the integral after doing parts. What do you mean keep the integral after doing parts? Because we did- this, this integral here? Yep. That's part of the parts formula. The integral of u dv is uv, minus the integral of oh, okay. V times DU. Got it. Any other questions? And we don't have to do that to the first part, the one half X squared, because there's no integral sign there. That's just the answer. Correct. This is the, the integral is on the V times DU, not on the UV parts. This is UV minus the integral of V times DU. 
So the integral of VDU, we have to evaluate that, but UV is just, that, that part is done. That term is done. Any questions? So what I would like for you to think about is what would happen if I took this up one more level. What if we had x cubed e to the 2x? So x, cubed, x squared e to the 2x led to a secondary integral, which was parts. And it was an x e to the 2x. And then after we did parts on that, our secondary integral was just the e to the 2x. So what happens, what would happen if I push this up to x cubed e to the 2x? What would show up in the secondary integral? If I start off with x cubed e to the 2x, think x about squared. what would show up here. We'd have an x squared e to the 2x, and then we'd have to do parts on that. And our third integral would have an x e to the 2x, and then our fourth integral would just be an e to the 2x. So one of the things that we're going to, we want to, to deal with is what happens if one of our factors is a polynomial and the other one's just gonna keep repeating itself, e to the 2x. We want a shortcut because all this should be predictable. So we want to think about a shortcut to multiple parts shortcut to multiple parts. That's what we want to think about. Any questions? It's funny because now that class is ending, they've shut down the generator outside. So I have this generator right in front of my, this big truck with the generator on it. And it's been running the entire class. And now that we're wrapping up, they're like, all right, let's cool it with the generator. I'm like, oh, great timing, guys. I'm not blaming these guys. I mean, they're just doing their jobs. It's totally cool. It's just funny, the timing. That's all. Any questions? Comments. Uh, yeah, is any is is that is that going to be on the test or what going to be on what test? <laughs> no, I'm just playing. Uh, the integration by parts. Um, there will be some quizzes on integration by parts, and when we start having tests, there will be a test with integration by parts on it. I'm not yeah. sure we're ready to have integrate have a test on the first parts, not parts, not parts integration, but like uh, fundamental theorem of calculus and stuff like that. So. We'll do you allow do you allow no cards for the test? Um, if I have a test, uh, you have better than note cards. You have like the internet and each other and everything. So you're an angel. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm just being realistic. I mean, how am I gonna? There's no way I could police that. <clears throat> okay, fair enough. Thank you. I also I also don't like time limits for doing tests like this because. If I say you have two hours to take this test, some of you don't have two hours where you, where you can sit down in a distraction-free environment and actually work on the test. It's different if we're meeting in person. So it, it's just it's different if we're meeting in person because if we just all agree that on this Friday in class, we're gonna have a test, then we can all sit down. We're all just gonna sit in one room together, be quiet, we'll close the doors. Uh, I let you, I let students listen to music during tests because it helps you close out things. So you, you can sit down and everything can be quiet and we can um, minimize distractions that way. But because we're all just in our homes or local coffee shops or who knows where, you, you might not have that. I mean, if you've got like a small child, there, there's no guarantee of having two hours consecutive. So you're gonna to have to do a couple problems here and a couple problems there. I think it's unreasonable to ask students to assume, I, this is where I think it comes from. And I don't wanna disparage my, my colleagues, but I think it comes from teachers saying, well, I can just sit in my kitchen and teach class. Why can't you? And I think some teachers will have more understanding because they have kids and like, oh, 
I've got to deal with the chaos of all this stuff going on when I'm trying to work. And then they'll know that students have, have that, those same problems. And it's just easier to be understanding. I just, and so what it comes down to, what it comes down to, I think, and this is maybe me being passive aggressive at my colleagues, I think it comes down to the fact that I'm gonna trust you and I'm gonna respect you to do the work. I'm just gonna, that's, just, that, that's what I think it comes down to. I respect you enough to trust you to do the work. And if you're gonna just cheat, then that's on you. That's it. If you're just, if you're just gonna go to Chegg or if you're just gonna look stuff up on Wolfram Alpha or just email it to your friends and copy and paste email, get an email from your friends and copy and paste it from them, that, that's on you. I'm too far away from you to police you. So I don't know, what, what, what are you doing here? And I'll just point out that you don't have the kind of wealth that allows you to behave that way. That's all. And I mean, that, that's, that's really what it comes down to for me. That's also why I'm not gonna require things like Proctorio because I think that's BS. I don't think it's reasonable to ask students to surrender administration, administrative rights to their computer. I don't think it's reasonable to demand that I be allowed a camera into your home because that's what, what Proctorio has. If you have a teacher that's demanding that you use Proctorio, they are demanding access to a camera in your home. That's why I object to it. That's why I'm with, I will stand by every student that says I will not participate if proctorio is the only way you're going to do this. Because I am not in favor of demanding that any teacher have access to a camera in your home. Anyway, so, and there's also, that, that, that's also an excellent point. There is no evidence, there is no, and when I mean evidence, I mean academic evidence, not just like, oh, well, I've observed this. There's no actual study, peer-reviewed study that indicates, not one that I can find anyway, that indicates that Proctorio even does what it says it will do. So until you bring me some evidence that happens, I will dismiss that argument and I will still stand by the fact that I am not willing to require that students allow me to invade their privacy just because I refuse to give them the respect that they deserve as human beings and trust them. Anyway, that's my soapbox for the day. Um, sorry, I was distracted by the whole cars thing, but uh, we'll do more examples on integration by parts tomorrow because it gets way weirder than this because we're also going to start combining with integration by substitution which is so awesome anyway that's going to do it for today i will see you all on tomorrow thanks for playing